Hello everyone, Credax here. Welcome back to our Planetons playthrough. So, in this episode, we are going to start with the top of our to-do list, which is fixing pure sand. I noticed an issue while I was doing the base tour video. Um, I am currently out of pure sand for, I believe it was molybdenum. Um, I think it's mainly because I haven't been processing as much iron and copper, and that was a main source of stone and gravel and sand. So at some point, I'll have to actually manufacture those things. But I think the actual issue... Is it this one? No, wait. It was up in the... Um, what's it called? Up in the north part of the base. Phosphorus. Phosphoric acid stuff. I think it was up here. What's the issue? Uh, we've got stone, we've got salt and coke, we've got phosphate, yeah, here, pure sand. So the problem is we're doing stacked pure sand. So, as we mentioned before, we are trying to get away from stacked items, which unfortunately takes a lot more bot usage, but that's okay. Um, so we are going to switch this over to regular pure sand rather than stacked. That will switch this one over. Let me take out kind of the extras here. And then we'll just switch this guy to regular pure sand. And keep this from stacking. So I think that'll work. I'll give it a second. Yep, there we go. Pure sand start starting to flow in. Uh, the rate here is up to 8, um, which is quite a lot. So I need to actually have two inserters. I think that should do it. 5.7, 5.7. Gotta go on the opposite side of the belt, though. Okay. So hopefully that will fix all my phosphoric acid problems and such. And the bots that are delivering the pure sand are gonna be pretty busy for a little while. I'm going to up this actually to a thousand just to make sure there's enough in there at all times because it has to transfer two chests deep into the system. And the good news is we are getting infinite pure sand from our power generation set up down here, what with the tailings and all. And so I'm not going to have to worry about pure sand being in the system, I don't think. I mean, eventually maybe the rate at which I use pure sand is going to be higher, but we should be okay. And I'm actually going to set up an overflow on this, which I haven't done yet. So it will put sand in the system. I have a circuit up here that will only put the pure sand into the network if I have less than 20,000. So that will work just fine. And then down here, I will have biomass go to a burner. And this should burn up all the excess pure sand and ash. I think, yeah, that'll put the pure sand in. This will put ash back in itself because you can burn ash to make more ash. And I did have someone comment on my Reddit post for the base tour video that I can actually make biomass better from phytoplankton, which was interesting because I hadn't even ever really noticed that phytoplankton can make uh, biomass. So let's see if we can find that recipe real quick. Of course, there's a million different recipes that phytoplankton can be in. But I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Of course, it's right here. Holy cow. Oh, that is a great ratio. 
50 phytoplankton to make 45 biomass all in three seconds. Oh my goodness. So the iron ore route is not the route we would want to go, but flue gas uh, is not very difficult. So I may have just, um, well, I guess I can't say I discovered it because the guy on the internet discovered it for me, but let's uh, just check this out real quick. So if I'm making it from flue gas and water, then we're gonna need a pump. We probably need a few more of those. Um, and then flue gas, I think you can make it directly from biomass. Ooh, biomass and hot air. Oh no, here we go. We can just make it from biomass. It's not a great ratio though. One biomass makes 15 flue gas, which is enough to make about two or three phytoplankton. That still seems like maybe a good deal. Um, is there a better way to get flue gas though? I mean, obviously ash plus pressurized air is probably a better way to do it. Because I have plenty of ash around. I don't know if there's an easy way to make ash on purpose, though. It kind of just comes from a lot of other processes. It probably is. Uh, coal bed gas. No, that's way too much hot air. You don't want to spend hot air to make flue gas. You can just kind of turn natural gas into flue gas. Coke oven gas turns into a thousand flue gas. Which subsequently means coke oven gas can easily be turned into absurd amounts of biomass. Uh, wood and hot air. No thanks. Okay, yeah, there's not... There's not a million ways to make flue gas. It mostly seems like a byproduct. But it is worth noting that once we do this whole outlet gas thing with stage 3 of coke processing, we are going to get tons of flue gas, which means we can make all the biomass we'll ever need in the game. Um, but let's just try this one. We need a gas refinery. Uh, these are fairly large, which I don't love. And we want to make flue gas from biomass. And then we need a compost plant. And the loop should be closed. Unless I'm forgetting something. So phytoplankton in. And then we will just have a whatever that's called. Why can't I think of what those are called? Loaders. We'll have a loader. Uh, we'll use a fast inserter here. And then this, let's just kind of see how fast this ends up making biomass. And we'll need to get it all jump started. That should be enough. Well, biomass. So that makes 1.33 biomass, or I mean, phytoplankton per second. So this is definitely the hold up here. I am out of stuff. Okay. Uh, there. We'll just make some biomass from wood real quick. We don't have any modules yet. Someday we'll have modules. But this might very well be the best way to make biomass. What was the ratio again? Oh, no, it's showing me the wood. We have to wait until it starts running with phytoplankton. But thank you to the man who commented on the Reddit post, or woman. Um, I have to give them the credit. I didn't even know phytoplankton could make biomass. So I think if we do need to make biomass in the future, this is how we're going to do it. I think this is even better than moss. 
Though we could always throw it into Helmod to really see how the numbers work out, but 50 phytoplankton makes 45 biomass. So it's very close to one to one. So I don't know why it's not running yet. Does it wait until it gets to 100? Is that what's happening? Hmm. I don't understand why this isn't running. Maybe it has something to do with me putting wood in there. That messed something up. But this essentially makes one biomass per second. Because if 50 makes 45, that's a ratio of 0.9. Yeah, I'm going to try deconstructing it and reconstructing it. Yeah, there we go. That was weird. So then that will happily make... More flu gas out of the biomass. Oh, right. So it's not quite... Okay, so this makes... Let's just do the math. Uh, this makes 1.333. And we multiply that by 0.9 to get the biomass output. So... We lose 10% of this. So we lose 0.133. So we're down to 1.2 is the actual output. And 1.2... Then we need five blue gas per phytoplankton. So that means we need about 5.5 .5 blue gas per biomass. And one biomass makes 15 blue gas. So we need about a third of the biomass to cycle back in. So this ends up making just underneath one biomass per second for every one of these uh, buildings. And I could run about 12 of them off of a single gas refinery and about the same number for one compost plant. So that seems pretty good. When we need more biomass in the future, we will definitely, definitely take a closer look into that. But the next thing I want to do is take a look at chromium. So I noticed in the last couple episodes that I'm actually out of chromium for drill heads. So that's not great. Uh, and my little chromium mine here is pretty close to running out. Um, so I want to work on that. And I think we'll start with just mining more chromium ore up here. And we'll put it on the same belt as this copper, since we're using stacking for that belt. So we'll just bring the chromium down to about here, and we'll process it right there. So first we'll need probably 20, 30 miners. Let's do 20. And we'll run up there. We'll make a radar as well. But yeah, I don't I don't think I need all of this for uh, biomass. I think we can do it better now. So we'll have to try that out. But I'm definitely not going to rebuild things that work. If they're working, they're working. But for future biomass, we'll we'll try that new method. All right, so we are going to need to run power up here. I keep forgetting I can build big electric poles now. Um, yeah. Because I have new beyond plates. All right, so we'll get some miners going. Okay, that looks good. I don't actually know what the rate is on mining these, so we'll have to check that out. So that needs 31 syngas to make 7.75 ore. 
That seems like more than enough for right now. The sin gas will be the problem. And so I will do my something from nothing sin gas. Which now I'm questioning if it's even... I don't remember, does the from nothing sin gas... Do I even need biomass? No, I need wood, because this, this whole build relies on having... Um, the wood turn into the coal, turn into the coke. So... So we'll try to make one of everything here. We'll probably have to run back over, because um, I don't have any trees. I just realized that. But everything else I think we have... Uh, what is this? Did I fail to connect some pipes here? This is for coal gas. Uh, what is this pipe right here? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, let's see. Pipe to ground. Oxygen. Oxygen. What's happening with the oxygen? Oh, that's an input. Right, okay, so that's just inputting oxygen. Um, I have no idea what that pipe is. Do I have radar coverage down here? Yeah, this is the original build. It looks like I do. I just have a rogue pipe sitting there. It must have... I must have just not seen it and deleted it. Because clearly I don't need it anymore. Uh, we do need... Oh, I did build the botanical nursery. And I ran out of pipes. Okay, so I need to go grab some trees and pipes. And then this will be sin gas hookup. Okay. We will stack these bad boys up. Guess we need power. That's ugly. I should have done that better. You'll have to forgive me. Okay. Down and then over. Alright, that should do it. So we need to go grab some trees. And... Bots will bring me more pipes and <laughs> a million other things that I don't have. My goodness. Uh, let's drop another 50 bots into the network. And where am I even making trees? Is it right here? Yeah. But I need seedlings, that's right. So let's do this in a way that builds up seedlings over time. Maybe just a couple... Yeah, just one stack should be enough, because that's 500. And 58 trees, I only need, is it 25? Yeah, it's 25. So. So that will be plenty. Oh my gosh, so many bots. Yeah, when you build a lot of things by hand, this is what happens every time. Come back to base. Okay, well, I think they got the majority of stuff to me. So, we'll run back up and get a lot more chromium mined. Now, I don't know if all of these miners will be fully um, powered up by the sin gas because this isn't quite enough sin gas, I don't think. All right, and then do I have enough underground pipes? Am I even still requesting underground pipes? I don't think I am. So at some point, I'm going to need to upgrade. Yeah, the upgrade planer doesn't see the pipes. But I'll have to make an upgrade planer and turn everything into neobium pipes. 
I think we're all hooked up there, and then I have power running. I guess down here's the closest. So we'll get our big power poles. Alright. That should do it. We'll need a jump start with I think some wood. And it goes in there. Oh, I didn't grab moss. Dang it. And we need some in here. For biomass. But yeah, I forgot about the moss. I need to go grab some moss too. Alright, and then we'll work on the Helmod Chromium Chain. How many do I need? 15. That should do it. Okay. So that'll make moss, which goes towards making tree seedlings. Okay. And then those go towards making logs. That takes a second. I wonder when I get Mark II trees. Oh, they don't even exist. Interesting. Well, Fastwood Forestry Mark II does exist, and it probably has more module slots, I assume. But yeah, we need red circuits for that, which are going to be a while. Advanced small parts, which require stainless steel, which is going to be a while. And then electric engines, which requires advanced small parts. Holy cow, 300 copper cable for one electric engine? Now that... Oh my gosh. Electric engines are expensive. That's insane. We are going to need to up our copper production for that. Okay, so we got our first log, but the first few logs go to making biomass. So this all takes a second to get running, I guess. But let's drop our radar and... I guess we'll just put it up here and we'll do a second one. That's more connected. I don't like having gaps in radar coverage. Okay. Now it looks like the wood is building up slowly. I am just going to hand feed this 10 wood to get it started, maybe 20. And that should start the whole sin gas process. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. I guess these have to get enough in them before they start mining. There we go. There's our first chromium miner. Sweet. Okay, so we've got chromium ore. And now we need to find our chromium block and check out our options. We've been doing just the straight up smelting. And I honestly might keep doing that because... It's surprisingly small benefit to do it other ways. Um, granted, it's not that difficult to get some limestone and sand casting. But you'd think I'd have a better way of processing chromium. Is that really... Chromium processing three, we don't have. Chromium processing two, 
Yeah, you still can't do molten chromium. And we are using the rejects and everything. Is there a different way to use chromite sand that I'm missing? Five chromium. 15 chromite sand. Or five chromium from 15 chromite sand. Yeah, that's right. These are very similar. One uses a sand casting. One uses five coke. Right. I can't do any of the other stuff yet. Hmm. Is this worth it to me? Honestly, since I've got 5 million chromium, I don't think so. I'm just going to, for now, until I am really strapped for chromium, I'm just going to keep making chromium the old way. The ore is super easy to get. I have a from nothing setup for the sin gas anyway. So we're just going to make chromium the same way we've been making it. So we will filter left chromium or stack of eight. We'll go over this direction. We'll have a requester for uh, Coke stack of eight. I guess it would be reasonable for me to put this in a factory building. We will unstack. Okay, that should do it. And we've got the ore flowing in. Should really put this on the other side. And then an unstacker. That should do it. And then we'll just use good old fashioned stone furnaces. It's probably too many, to be honest. I don't know how many I need. One point six. Hmm. Actually, I might need a few more. these down by a couple want to grab that chromium bar got it okay all right that's Probably overkill. In fact, I'm quite certain it's overkill. Well, it's close-ish. I mean, obviously I'm only doing half a belt, so 7.5 is the most I can handle, but... That, that should all work just fine. All right, so then that will output into a provider chest here, which I'll just let it fill up quite a bit because there's not a high cost to chromium. It's not like I'm using drill heads or anything to drill this. It's just a little bit of a power cost and a small amount of coke to run all these. So. Unless I'm... Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I like it. Okay, that should help quite a bit with the chromium issues. I should get rid of all the ore in my inventory. Get rid of the coke in my inventory. Oops, got rid of too much coke in my inventory. All right, we'll call that a day. So chromium processing... 
Someday we'll do better chromium, but not right now. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is work on my iron. Um, or at least... Well, do we... I keep thinking... I keep putting it off, and I keep thinking, okay, I need to get that done, but do I really? I mean, we've already got... It's all backed up. It's not like... I don't know. It's not like I'm using a whole belt yet. And this can handle most of a full belt, I think. Let's take a look at our production. So, iron ore... We are using an average of 500 per minute, which is... How many per second? Doesn't tell me that, does it? Oh. It actually does look like I'm maxed out. Oh, sorry, that's iron ore production. We're looking at consumption. Um, yeah, it looks like it. we actually have a very consistent consumption, which means probably not good things. Um, we are fully stocked up on iron niobium alloy and steel. I wonder if it's just filling up the molten iron. Molten iron, molten steel, those are totally backed up. Yeah, it looks like it's just getting this molten iron backed up is actually the main piece. So pretty soon, I think the iron will slow down again. Um, all that to say, I'm not quite needing better iron. So let's go back to good alien sample. Because this is something we need for some of our more advanced creatures and different things. DNA polymerase, I believe I automated. Let's double check that because it's been a while. Uh, would have been over in this area. DNA polymerase. Where are you? Yes, we did. Okay. Beautiful. And we have 20 of them. So we've got that. And we then need primers. I think I did that too, right? Did I do primers? No. I don't don't think I got that far. Maybe that's why I made sea sponges. So we need a biofactory to make primers in. I guess an easy way to find out if I've ever produced something is to search for it. Primers. No, okay. So we need a biofactory. And we'll just throw that somewhere in the mix here. It does need phytoplankton. Which I've learned I can make from flue gas, which is very nice. Oh, there's... Oh, right. There's multiple ways to make primers. I forgot about this. So there's the one that adds in a sea sponge to get more. Which then reduces the cost in terms of sap, mushrooms, phytoplankton, laboratory instrument. And then this one requires just a little bit of simic blood. But I don't have simics yet. So we'll just go with this guy right here. I'm not going to need a huge amount. And then the phytoplankton. We will just make right here on site. You know, the little phytoplankton farm. And I think because of the small number... How many primers am I going to need? One good alien sample only requires one primer. Which requires 80 phytoplankton, which would be 64 iron ore. Or do I just want to go with flue gas? Ah, we'll just go with flue gas. I don't want to use up too much iron. It's just annoying to need the gas. What are they called? Gas refinery. They're just kind of large. You're making flue gas from biomass. We will be requesting the biomass. We need water, which I'm sure we've got around. Connect 
that up. So phytoplankton's good. I'll request all the other stuff. Probably a fast inserter. And as usual, we'll do a limit on the output. Primers are less than 20. And I'm going to be missing a few things. I'm probably missing mushrooms, sea sponges. OK, so sea sponges I need to actually output. We are crafting them in our old urea plant. Uh, so I've, I guess I've screwed up the automation here. Why is this not? Oh, it's because of the sprouts getting. I shouldn't be using the same container. So this one should output the sea sponges mark one, which then get it put into here. And then this one needs to output into this one, which inputs into this building. And I think sea sponge sprouts are not the ones that get used in recipes, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, weird. They are used in a couple recipe. So is it sea sponges that are not used in recipes? No, these are used in recipes. So sea sponge sprouts. I can make borax out of those? Who knew? Biomass. And then we actually do need the sprouts for the cotton guts, which is kind of why we started this whole thing in the beginning anyway. Oh yeah, and I can't do this research because that's the one I originally wanted to do because that was a lot more efficient. Okay, well the only thing I will need them for is cotton guts. So the main thing I want to focus on then is the sea sponge mark ones, which is the output of this building. So I want this one to be limited and this one to be far less limited. And we'll put the sprouts that we have in here. Then, this is really convoluted, but it will work. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to use this as a method. Oops, I needed that. Um, to put the sea sponges in the logistics network. Sorry, my brain is running at half speed today, I think. But this guy has to have a condition where he will only output. Oh, I'm out of Zogna bacteria. That's not good. Row, row. Why are we out of petri dishes? I guess we're just making them as fast as I can. Because we need the urea, I guess, is the problem. I wonder what all that's being used for. Probably for ammonia. Let's follow this to wherever it goes. No, not ammonia. No, it is being used for ammonia. And what am I using all that ammonia for right now? Follow it to its source. Wait. Oh my gosh. Holy cow, we have a problem. All right. This, oh man, I've made some mistakes. Okay, this guy needs to be connected to the logistics. And if ammonia barrel is less than a thousand, then it will run. So what was happening, so here's how this happened. We've made some mistakes. So this is 
of the acetone plus syn gas to make organic solvent setup. That's kind of why we did acetone and phosphoric acid in the first place. And we knew we'd need phosphoric acid for other stuff. So then we're barreling up the acetone, or I mean organic solvent, here just to have on hand. Now the ammonia, I'm like, oh, that's a nice byproduct. So we barreled that into active provider chest because we wanted to make sure the ammonia wasn't ever the reason we were backing up on organic solvent. Then I thought, oh, well, I need more ammonia barrels, so we will top up this area with extra urea. But the problem with that is all of that was going into an active provider chest. So I probably have, let's find out. Yeah, I have 5,000 ammonia barrels. So, no, that is um, more ammonia than I will be needing anytime soon. So now we'll have this inserter only run if I'm short on ammonia barrels. Okay, well, that has wasted a lot of manure and urea, and therefore time and power and who knows what else. But this will start to build back up again and stall out. So anyway, all that being said, sea sponges are the main reason I was doing any of this. Um, sea sponge is greater than 10. I'll put it on a belt and it'll run out into a chest. Let's do active provider. And now we have sea sponges, okay. And finally, we are going to need sap, which I don't think I'm putting in providers anywhere. So let's just do that right here. Oh, actually I am doing that, just kidding. We're doing that right here. We've got plenty of sap. And then mushrooms. Uh, I am doing plenty of mushroom action inside of the Ulrich food plant, and so I'm going to grab all these real quick. And then we're just going to have, I don't know, two mushroom makers somewhere, kind of on the outskirts of the base, just making mushrooms. Maybe right here, this seems out of the way. Uh, we'll have two plantations. And at some point we're going to have to improve our plastic as well. Like we're using tar to make the aromatics, but we really should be using tailings to make the aromatics because we're wasting tar. And this should be adding oxygen. So, And I think there's actually just straight up better... Um, recipes for plastic. I seem to remember there was a pretty strong one that I unlocked at some point. Uh, we actually want to put this to the side. And then these guys will be taking from the spore collectors. If I can find them. in each of these. I think the rates match perfectly. Yeah. Okay, so that should get us some amount of mushrooms. And we will just let that build up indefinitely. It only costs power, so there's no reason that I have to slow that down. It doesn't even cost very much power. It's a few hundred kilowatts. doesn't seem to be... Why is this not running? This one's running. Oh, right. It's only a 40% chance of getting spores. That's... So, depending on luck, it may or may not run constantly. Alright, so we've got mushrooms in the network now. Not for any amount of large usage, but enough to automate these primers. Sweet, okay. 
So we've got primers, and we will craft up to 20 of them. We've got our phytoplankton all figured out. So we are getting closer and closer to good alien samples. We will need microfiber, and then Corlax milk and formamide. Formamide, thankfully, we can make. I'm just going to do that right now, actually. And this whole thing is made in a gene lab, so we are going to... We'll kind of set up the end step first here. And I should probably... Because these things are all so expensive, I should probably just change this to a stack size 1. And that way I won't put too much or kind of deal with stack size giving me extra stuff. Okay, so this one we want good alien sample. If it's less than, we'll just go up to 10 of those. And then we will request, I'm just going to do manual requests because I only want to request one set. Well, we'll do this. We'll do this, and then I'll just cut all these down. So we'll do one, two, I'm just dividing everything by five, ten, one, one, five, and plastic and say 20 because it's a very far distance. Now, primers, I'm a little confused. Is something else? Oh. Are we requesting sea sponges over here? No. What is requesting? Hey, look, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of cotton guts here. And apparently I'm not providing water barrels to the network. Um, but what else is requesting sea sponges? And why are the sea sponges that I put here not going towards the primer? That is the question of the day. Did I set up the cotton gut stud breeding requester chest somewhere? We are on a wild goose chase for sea sponges. If you see them, uh, let me know in the comments because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find them right now. I'm really having trouble remembering what I would have automated. Where are these sea sponges? Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Where did they go? Okay, new idea. Let's just remind ourselves real quickly, what are they used for? I haven't automated cytostatics, so it wouldn't be there. don't think I'm using them for Simic. No, I, I know I'm not using them for Simics. And what else are they even used in? None of these recipes are things that I have. The only thing would be primers. So that means maybe I wasn't making it up and I did put a primers building somewhere. And that's where they're going. That would be kind of funny. Um, scary a little bit, because I'm just that forgetful, I guess. But where in the world are the sea sponges? Hmm. Because they should be here. Oh. Okay, I'm just dumb. They did get here, and they've made two primers already, and those primers are now here. Gosh, my bad, guys. <laughs> there are no missing sea sponges. Just kidding. Okay, well, we are going to make our fluidized bed reactor and work on formamide, and then we'll work on Corlexes and Corlex milk and microfiber in the next episode.
because uh, I don't know if I want to deal with that just at this moment. So formamide, not too difficult to make. I can actually use this biomass right here. Oh, I don't want to extend that. Um, and we'll just put a high pressure furnace right here, making carbon dioxide. And then move this over a little bit. And then ammonia is pretty close, so I don't think it's worth barreling. Ah, uh, well, oof, that's unfortunate. So I guess the restriction should be on this inserter. And what I mean by restriction is I want him to only work if ammonia barrel in the network is less than a thousand. Oh, no, wait, I don't, because of... I want this to always output. Yeah, I did already think about that, and I decided against it. So what I actually want is I want this to... Uh, I don't know how else to do this. I just don't want to unbarrel it right over here. That feels like a waste, but... I don't really know how to make those circuits do exactly what I want them to do, so we will settle for ammonia unbarreling just right here. Still feels like a complete waste, but here we are. Barreling, unbarreling. Bring over some ammonia barrels and... That should do it. We'll make sure that that works. Yep, there we go. Formamide. And is that used in a million places? Formamide. It's used for good alien sample. Great alien sample. Which we're not going to need, at least until chemical and pie science. And uh, whatever this is, which is even probably further. So I'm not going to worry about barreling up formamide. All right, sweet. So microfiber and Corlex milk are next on the list. Uh, let's make sure we've researched Corlexes. I have. So we'll be working on automating Corlexes in the next episode. And that means I'm going to have to do the whole artificial blood thing, which we've been putting off for a while to make the first one, which requires the cobalt fluoride, which is the cobalt extract and rare. Okay, so we're maybe going to work towards automating core Lexus in the next episode. Who knows if we'll actually get there. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you all next time.